Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Job Shop and Machine Shop Scheduling Webinar. So what we're going to do is spend the, the afternoon talking about uh, how to schedule uh, a very difficult situation, which is highly custom machine shops and job shops. So if you have questions, feel free at any time to go ahead and type them into the chat box. So you can go ahead and on the right side in your control panel, you should see a chat box and you can type your question in there. I'm the only one that will uh, see your question and I will try to address them as we go and I'll also have time at the end to um, take a peruse through there and make sure we've answered all your questions. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and jump in. So uh, some of you I, I know and some of you I don't, but here's a brief um, bio on me. And I don't want to spend much time on this because I really want to get into uh, scheduling. But what you should probably know is that I'm an engineer by education, a PhD in engineering, and I've um, been doing theory of constraints since 1986. And for the most part, um, sorry, since 1989, and for the most part, I've been working with a lot of highly custom job shops and machine shops, and I was with some big companies prior to becoming a consultant. And um, after I became a consultant, I also spent three, wor three years working for Dr. Goldratt, who is the um, founder, father of Theory of Constraints. And so I have a lot of experience not only with Theory of Constraints, but most specifically with machine shops and job shops. And that's kind of how this all developed was I was running um, into some of, my own, some of my own frustrations in applying theory of constraints to machine shops and job shops. And if you recall from the book, The Goal, it took place in a machine shop. So it was, why, why is this so difficult? It, it shouldn't be that difficult. So I really had to dig in to understand what the differences were. So I'm gonna uh, share some of my learnings along the way. And also we're going to talk about not only um, kind of base theory of constraints and, and what we needed to do different, but also conventional wisdom. How, how are most shops managed and run? All right, so there's the, the quick background. And what we're going to do is we're going to cover the four questions that um, I told you about when I advertised this webinar. So we're going to talk about why is scheduling um, custom job shops and machine shops so hard? Can it be easier? What are the most important things to consider when deciding how you will schedule your shop? And then how important is the software you choose? And then a little bit of a warning, I will do a little bit of a commercial on Velocity Scheduling System because that's the system I developed to help address all these issues. And, and I'll take your live questions as you have them and then also uh, at the end. So feel free to type them into the chat at any time and let's make sure we get those questions answered. Okay, so why is scheduling custom job shops and machine shops so hard? And if you read my report, uh, the nine challenges and if you haven't read it you can go to velocity scheduling system dot wordpress dot com and any report or video that I refer to you'll find there so and if you if you um, can't remember that if you just do a search on velocity scheduling system you'll find that blog but it's velocity scheduling system dot wordpress dot com and one of the reports I wrote is called the nine challenges to scheduling your machine shop and why your schedule's dead on arrival. And so in working with a lot of machine shops, um, I kind of developed this list, and then I also surveyed about 1,500 job shop owners through uh, NTMA. And I've had lots of feedback on what these challenges are. But, and I don't need to tell you, you're probably familiar to this list and can probably add to it, but really we're dealing with so many sources of variability. So we get the schedule and then clients change their mind. And, and then of course we have to reshuffle the schedule based on whether they want to move something forward or back and some, or some of both. Um, vendors 
are not always reliable. So in custom job shops and machine shops, um, many times we're using a lot of outsourced vendors for plating, uh, powder coating, heat treating, all those kinds of things. And they're not, they don't always do what they said when they said they'd do it. So we, we have that added to our mix as well. And if something doesn't come back when promised from them, again, we have to reshuffle our schedule potentially to meet our commitments. And then of course our mix can vary wildly. So we, we could have a ton of turning one week and then the next week have no turning. So our constraint, what I find is that the constraint in this situation tends to move around. Um, so one week it will be in turning and then one week it'll be at the mill and then the next week it'll be in grinding or somewhere else. And literally uh, each week where your constraint is can be different and sometimes it's even worse than that each day it can be different. And, and so the more uh, mix variability you have, the more you probably experience your constraint moving around. And, and of course when the constraint it shows up somewhere then the schedule is going to be wrong because if things didn't get done when we expected then the schedule now all of a sudden is out of whack it, it doesn't represent reality and we have of course not um, an ideal situation most of the time with the skills and the employees we have so we don't always have the right skill um, ready to work on the job that we need to have worked on and where you know the discipline to um, keep up the rate of work and and showing up for work and all those things is is quite often lacking and then of course our processes they are uh, processes and by the nature of processes they're not always reliable you know and it doesn't always take the same amount of time to do something so things do break we do break cutting tools machines go down um, our processes are not always repeatable depending on the last time we've done preventive maintenance and when we've been, um, been at last able to calibrate and those kinds of things. So our processes are not perfect, you know, they're processes and our machines do break down. So from time to time, as if the above things weren't enough, we do have machines that, that go down and our quality isn't perfect. So we, we can't always get it done exactly right the first time, particularly when we're running new jobs in a highly custom environment. Uh, we don't always get the jobs done the first time. And then, of course, our data is not readily available or accurate or communicated. So we don't even have uh, good data to even help us try to figure out what to do here. And then communication between silos is different. I hear a lot of stories about sales committing to something, throwing it over the wall to manufacturing. And, you know, the, the communication isn't always there. We, we tend to be in these silos. And so all of these things really are just sources of variability. And so no wonder the schedule's done on arrival. I mean, the minute you print it, it's almost out of whack. If something doesn't go as we expected, the schedule can be wrong very, very quickly. And so it is really tough to schedule uh, a, a job shop or a machine shop. Very, very tough to do. And um, all these sources of variability are, are part of the reason. And 